Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley Starting a Business, Building a Brand Vlog. This one, big number, 375. So, next week, exciting vlog. Real exciting. I am going to Chicago. I am bringing the camera. I am going to bring it to the T. Shanley holiday party so that everybody on our team can say hello who wants to say hello. And you can meet everybody in a more low-key kind of environment. And it's I'm really excited. I haven't been to Chicago in a while, it feels like. It feels like forever. Uh, but going to be going two nights, and I'm really excited about that. And uh, excited to see the team, have our meeting, have our dinner, and um, it's going to be it's going to be exciting. And so I'm really pumped about that. All right, something else that I'm a little bit pumped about is answering your business questions. Um, there weren't any on Marnie's vlog, and if you guys are into info products or are thinking about possibly doing an info product, you got to watch last week's vlog. Marnie dropped a ton of knowledge, and she is amazing in terms of what she has built from nothing, basically, from just the idea that, hey, I want to I wanna help people uh, date, basically. And it's amazing, like very, 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 incredible business. And so anyway, it was really wonderful spending a few days with Marnie. Um, There's a comment on one of the vlogs where we we're like, why didn't she stay at your house? Because that's one of the things, right? You know, like that's like, you don't want to stay at people's house. I don't want to stay at people's houses. And uh, my wife would have been cool if she stayed at my house. I just thought it, it's weird. I'm not having somebody stay at my house unless it's like Antonio, right? Whatever. Uh, but, but yeah, and for me, little, little weird thing about me, when I go to like visit people or places, I never will stay at their house. And it's just something that forever I've, I've done this. It's something where I just don't, I like having my own space. I like the ability to be able to walk around naked and not have to like, like worry about somebody else's house and stuff and stuff like that. And so for me, it's more comfortable for the person that I'm visiting. I'm sure it's more comfortable. And so hotels and travel, those are two things that I will spend a little bit of money on. Um, also, speaking of money, I want to talk today a little bit about an investment opportunity for you. No, I'm kidding. It's an investment that I'm starting to dabble in the exploratory process on. Um, I also am going to get to your business questions. Okay, so business questions. If you have one down below, start it with business question and ask it. At the end of, actually, it won't be next week because we're going to Chicago. We are going. But the week after, I'm going to get to your business questions. The questions from today that I'm going to answer are actually from two vlogs ago because there were some incredible questions that I just did not get to. I didn't have the time. I monopolized it. Um, Something that I have been doing that has been monopolizing my YouTube consumption has been a gentleman by the name of Ben Mala. Um, he's a real estate guy. Uh, he's kind of like a, a heavy set dude. He's got a beard. He smokes cigarettes. And he's just like, he's like just a, just a dude, right? And um, so I've started thinking a little bit about long term in terms of like investing. I really like real estate because it's like a tangible thing, right? I understand like I never really got into crypto. I never really got into, you know, I do have investments in like the market and different things because I understand that you need to basically diversify. Having money in a checking account is definitely not a good place in terms of, of investing, right? You're not making any money on your money. But for me, as some of you guys have known or know because you watch my vlog, I hate debt. I hate debt. It just doesn't feel good for me. And so for me, up until this point, it's always been about, you know what, if I can pay cash for something, I'm going to do it. And I know that I've got an opportunity cost. And a few years ago, right, it was a bigger opportunity cost. Because if you say have a million dollars, right, and if you're paying a million dollars and you don't have that money invested somewhere else, you know, if it's just tied up in a real estate asset or some asset, you're not making a percentage or a return on that money. It's sitting there, right? Which is why... Most people, when it comes to investing, they want to use somebody else's money, right? Bank's money. Instead of paying cash for everything, they'll put 20% down and then they'll take that other money and invest it knowing that they can make, say, 5% or 6%. All right, you know you got to pay the bank their percentage or their, their, their interest, but you're still making the delta or the difference, right? And that's how people really build, you know, or I should say collect assets and, and really build on, on their investments. For me, I haven't been doing that. I have been basically buying something, I'll fix it up, I'll do whatever I do, and I pay cash for it, and I leave the money in there. But the more I sort of think, and the more I kind of go down the rabbit hole of, all right, how do I really wanna invest my money moving forward? I keep coming back to this, this commercial 
multifamily kind of thing, right? Apartments, basically. Um, you know, we have played around with, uh, my wife and I, we had a rental unit a long time ago. She bought it. She bought it. It was bank owned. She put a few thousand dollars into it, fixed it up and then rented it out. Made like $1,200 in rent, her mortgage payment. I don't remember what it was at the time, but at the end of the day, she might've put a few hundred dollars in her pocket. Um, and then they moved out. It was trashed. And she's like, listen, we're not, we're not landlords. We don't, I don't want to do this. And so she sold the property. Um, she had it for X number of years, which meant there was some tax benefit and she made, you know, maybe $50,000, $20,000. I don't remember exactly what the amount of money was, which was pretty good. It was a good investment for her. It seems like a whole lot of work for a little bit of money, right? But what I keep coming back to is this whole multifamily, you know, apartment sort of complex somewhere between 10 to 30, you know, units in that range. And so what I've been doing recently is, okay, what's out there? You know, what is the, what is the, what is the numbers? How do the numbers work out? You know, if they pay this rent, if you get a loan for this, if you're paying this and you're getting this cap rate and what your, you know, your income, like, so I'm starting to kind of go down that rabbit hole and it's really kind of got me thinking and it's gotten me excited, honestly. Um, I've been watching a lot of the gentleman, Ben Mala, his, uh, his videos online. And um, he's a real estate guy on YouTube. He is pretty just like, he's like, he's a heavy set dude who smokes. Like there's no mistaking Ben Mala. Um, you know, Grant Cardone is another one that a lot of people obviously are familiar with. And he has a lot of incredible things to say. I don't necessarily really connect or relate to him, but Ben Mala, for whatever reason, maybe it's because he's like, honestly, he feels like a family member that's just giving me advice on like, all right, so this is what you need for the deal. You need this, you need this, you need this, and this is the numbers, boom, go out and do it. Like it makes sense if it does this, right? And so it's so simple, it's like, it, it, it's more kind of, it's a more appealing to me. And he made it accessible to me, which really was something that I needed because you know to go through and really try to understand um, with some of these other courses and stuff, I just didn't have, I didn't have the capacity and I also um, don't trust I don't trust a lot of people in terms of, you know, how to get rich and how to make money on this and that. There's just something about Ben that, that I watched a few videos and I'm like, okay, it makes sense. Like it just clicked. I'm going to link to down below two videos from him that for me just kind of made it like kind of click. I understood it a lot more than I did before. You know, I didn't understand really like what a cap rate was and all this different stuff. And so anyway, I've been starting the process of kind of exploring that. And, um, and, but this time, instead of me like putting up all my cash, I am definitely going to try to get a loan for 80% of it. If I can do that. Um, the tricky thing now is that because money is so expensive and their interest rates are so high, you're not going to make as much as you would have a few years ago, right? Because, you know, if you're getting charged 5% or whatever it may be, you know, that's a lot, especially if your cap rate is like seven, there's like 2%, you know, that you're at, like, anyway, there's, there's a lot that goes into it, but I'm excited about it. And I've been looking at a few properties. Um, I'm looking specifically in the state of Georgia at some of these, um, these assets. And there are a few ways to make money at it, right? You go in, if it's already a nice place, you know, you, you basically keep it being a nice place. You get it rented out hundred percent. And then, you know, over time, possibly you do some improvements or you raise the rent a little bit and that's how you make a little bit, bit, little bit more money. But there are other places that are like, kind of like crappy that you would come in and you would fix it up a bit. You know, you paint the walls or you paint the building, you put in new tile, new carpet, you know, new kitchens, you know, you spend a little bit of money, but now your asset, instead of costing you a million dollars is worth $2 million. The other cool thing about those scenarios is that you're also able to um, increase the rent a little bit and, and make more money that way. And so there's a lot of different ways, but I will keep you posted as I kind of go down this, this rabbit hole. And as I start to learn a little bit more, um, nothing is, is, is under contract yet, but I'm starting to learn. And it's also something that I, I want my wife to get involved in a bit more because, you know, with her retirement and her kind of, you know, looking for things to do. I think this might be a cool thing for her because she also likes real estate. She's also really good with numbers and she's smart. And so having somebody that pays attention to that area of our business, um, would be awesome. And so kind of like the salon, I've got Tony and Courtney that are kind of paying attention to that. I want my wife to basically help me with this new possible kind of 
arm of, of, uh, of my investments. And so just something that I'm thinking about, and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about it and encourage you to watch Ben's videos because um, they're really good and uh, he makes it so digestible and easy to understand. And like I said, he's kind of like, a, he feels like a family member because he literally is like my uncle. Like I've got like 10 of him in my family. Anyway, uh, now what I want to do is actually get to some of your amazing business questions. If you want to hear more though about the commercial real estate possibility, and as I go through that, drop me one of these and down below say, yo Alpha, tell us more about this potential real estate situation. All right, so this first business question comes from our friend Sackman848. He says, I run a health and fitness company. We're doing very well. We have a team of eight. Congratulations for the record. And uh, fitness, obviously something that I'm very passionate about. So the fact that you're making it work, congratulations. I could not. Things are good, but we have not hit the point of true financial freedom yet. And for the record, I don't know what true financial freedom means. So if you have a better explanation of what that means, I would love to know down below. Please let me know. Say, yo, in my opinion, this is what financial freedom means. Um, because the other day I was talking to Marnie and we were talking about wealthy. What does wealthy mean? And I'm like, what does it mean? I don't even know. And, um, and so anyway, <laughs> just one of those abstract things that I was trying to think about. This Q4, we have issues with our Facebook ads and had the worst quarter in our history. We just broke even and it kind of freaked me out, which means if you think you broke even, you probably did less than break even. Anyway, um, we're not in any financial danger, uh, didn't touch the emergency, emergency fund or anything. How do you go about managing cash? If uh, I feel like we're on a great trend up, I'm ready to make big financial commitments in my personal life but, uh, but then this happened and now I'm a little nervous to make any big moves with long-term commitments. What do you think? I think you're smart to put the brakes on a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, having, you, you recently started this business. Um, I don't know how recently you started it, but you know, the, the economy is a weird thing right now, right? I think everybody is kind of like, wait a second, I better, I better, I better hold on to this cash a little bit because I don't know exactly what's going to happen. But as somebody said, when there's blood in the streets and people are scared, that's when you should be investing, right? Well, maybe, but you see what happens and how it feels last quarter, right? Q4 was bad, right? Hasn't started the trend back up. Are you seeing a trend? Because in the health and fitness industry, right? January, that's like, that's the money month, right? January is when you make a lot of money, you get a lot of new members, people are amped, people are pumped, people are ready to take on those New Year's commitments or New Year's resolutions. So January is kind of like, probably in my opinion, I don't know technically what you do, so I don't know if that's true, but I would assume that your business is doing well now. Now the fourth quarter, you know, that's three months. You know, how did it do? Like, where was it? Was it, was it flat? Was it going down? Like, like there's a lot more to this story, but in terms of really, you know, making big commitments now, you know, you also need to know what the psych has, cyclical nature of your business is, right? Do you every day, every th fourth quarter, is it like crazy down? And you know that, okay, this is just the way that it's going to be. And so you prepare and plan for that. Because if you know that it's not going to be straight up into the right, you know, you can plan for that. But this was a good eye-opening experience and it may be a benefit that you learned it, honestly. Even though things suck and, and you're like, oh damn, I didn't make the money I wanted to and things are, things are down, right? Was it a learning experience that you needed to learn because if not, you know, what, what happens, right? You know, COVID was another one of those like out of the blue scenarios that nobody really saw coming, but then it's like, oh crap, we're in it. And if you were a restaurant or you were in the food service business or a lot of other businesses, even, even clothing, right? Took a huge hit and not just for a month, it was like years of, of, of troubles, right? And you couldn't see that coming. The people that were safe, the people that didn't overextend themselves and grew a little bit slower were probably in better financial positions. Um, and so what I'd recommend is be careful. Don't do anything too crazy. See how things start to play out this year and see what happens fourth quarter. Um, you know, in terms of what big financial commitments, I'm not sure what that means. And so if you want to expand on that, I would be happy to give more input or my insights. Uh, based on that, but great question and congratulations for making it through the fourth quarter and not making those big commitments because at that point, if you did and you had a shitty fourth quarter, you'd be sweating bullets, gentlemen. You're already sweating bullets. You'd be sweating even more. You also be pooping your pants because that is no fun. Gentlemen, <laughs> what am I even talking about exactly? 
The next business question comes from our friend, Sanser, uh, that is a long name, I don't even know. Wanted to ask you on the strategies and psychologies of selling and marketing. What is your opinion and practice on the marketing and selling skills and tricks? For instance, when should you push for a product and when to back off a little? Or how long should you need the customer to wait, uh, wait a bit before going go in for the close? Since you're an entrepreneur and has experience in doing business, um, it would be great if you would do a video on strategies and psychologies of selling uh, and marketing. So I think this is an incredible question in terms of, because here's the thing, if you're good at selling, you can basically do anything, right? Because every industry, everybody needs people that are really good at sales. And I have learned over the years to be a pretty decent salesperson, right? And the reason why I am successful, there are a few reasons that I'm gonna go into in a later video. Guys, if you want me to go into my personal belief, strategy, and philosophy around selling and how to be an incredible salesperson, down below say, yo alpha, business question, tell us how you sell so much damn shit. The next business question, interestingly enough, is from our friend Salma Tahir, 2783. Thanks for being here, brother. He says, hello, Aaron, I'm thinking about investing in real estate. You think it's a profitable business? <laughs> I'm thinking about doing it too. And it depends. The profitability and the money is something you got to think about and figure out. All right, Ben Mala, those two videos I mentioned are going to be linked down below. Start there. And um, I, think, I think Ben's awesome. <laughs> but I'm biased because he literally is like my Italian uncle. The last business question is an awesome one. And um, it's also kind of about real estate a little bit. It's from our friend uh, Nomad Over Normal. He says, can you tell the story of your journey with office space for the YouTube channel? When did you first know you couldn't film at home? How long did it take until you could afford it? Why did you financially justify not using a spare bedroom? Did you rent somewhere else before you bought the studio space? I'm coming into my own as a self-employed um, creator. And even though I'll be earning much more, I can't imagine justifying the money to work out of a commercial property. So you're smart. You shouldn't if you don't need to, right? For me, um, it was more about Pete and Pedro than it was about filming from home. And at the time, I was filming in my basement. I had my little gray like screen up there. I had a camera. I had all these cheap ass like Home Depot lights. And it worked really, really well. Uh, but I was operating Pete and Pedro out of a spare bedroom in my house. And so it got to the point where I needed help and I did not want somebody to come into my spare bedroom in order to help the work, right? And so I was like, all right, I probably need to look for a space that I can operate my, my, my Pete and Pedro business out of. But also while I'm at it, I might as well kind of think about possibly setting up a better, higher quality studio. And so it was just kind of like dumb luck. I was running around Marietta. Um, as you guys know, I live in Marietta. I love this area. And there was this building that I fell in love with. I saw it. I was like, my God, it's incredible. It was an old sock factory. And I even drove my wife by this building. And I'm like, someday we're going to live there. Someday. Like it was total like manifest, 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 you know, manifestation of like what I wanted. Right. And then one day I was, I was, I was looking and I was just running around the square. I was looking to see if there were for lease signs. I went and I looked at some property, um, a lease. It was a building. I was like, ah, I don't really, really love it. It's not really that cool. And all of a sudden I saw a for sale sign at my unit and it was in the bushes and it was kind of leaning over. I'm like, wait a second, let me go check this out. And so I called and it was like $300,000 around there. And so at the time I'd been making a little bit more money and I had the ability to actually, you know, put a down payment down up until that point, you know, I wasn't making much money. And so, um, it was not something that I was really looking to do. And if I hadn't had Pete and Pedro, I probably still would be just filming vi vi videos in my basement, right? Because it's cheap and the justification of, of a space doesn't make sense. Is it going to help you make more money? If the answer is yes, then possibly do it. If the answer is no, it's just a cool space, then the answer is no. The other part for me was it did give me somewhere to go, which I like not being in the same place all day, every day. And so for me, 
um, when I decided to kind of go full time in terms of like being a creator, it was nice to have an office to go to. I felt more productive when I came here. It was all about business. When I went home, it was all about being home and editing videos and working from home. Um, but, but no, it, it allowed me to sort of separate my life a little bit more. And that also is something that I, I very much enjoyed. But for me, what I would recommend is until you need it, don't do it. Stay home, do your thing. If there becomes, or if there's an opportunity to, you know, lease a place, or if it's something that you feel is going to help take you to the next level, which a lot of these creators, they do, right? They have staff, they've got studio, they've got, you know, different lighting. They've got a lot more capabilities, you know, in a blank space or a warehouse or something like that, as opposed to in a spare bedroom. A spare bedroom is limited, but there are a ton of creators that make a gazillion dollars that are just operating out of their spare bedroom. There is no need for a lot of people. So it really boils down to you, what you need, what you want, and being smart. And for me, what I would recommend, since you're kind of just starting, getting your feet under you, and you're starting to make money, don't rush out and spend it. Save it, invest it, do what you can do to start earning more money. And if the time comes where you want a space, then you'll have the cash to do it. And that is the story of my office. Yeah. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to wrap things up. Super pumped and excited about next week. If you dug this video, drop me one of these. Also, if you have a business question down below, start it with business question and ask it. Each week we try to get to some of them. Next week we'll get to none of them. But the week after, I'm going to get to all of them. Gentlemen, we love you more than our double monk strap shoes. Thanks for watching. See you next week.